Ladies and gentlemen, people of all gender expressions, thank you for checking out the North Bank Media Podcast. I am your host, Patrick Strevens. So I'm here alone, which I seem to be uh, doing once a month. So if you're not into just me airing my half-baked random ideations and thoughts, that's totally fine. I would say I'm seeing, you know, through the analytics and whatnot, that the views on these podcasts are slowly going up. So that's great. Very thankful very grateful to whoever it is that's listening to these things. <laughs> you know, I, I, I've said all along, I'm not doing it for you, but maybe in some sense I, I am. It's uh, I'm conscious of it, of the small audience that's growing and uh, thankful for it. And I hope it's helping. I hope people are finding it interesting. Um, it, about a month ago, I did a, one of these solo rants because I'd experienced a sort of perspective shift, you know, at a very, a moving sort of soul churning conversation with Brittany Ohi. Uh, she really helped me see some things that I didn't hadn't previously seen. And again, I'm not saying I agreed fully and wholeheartedly with everything she said, but she allowed me to widen my perspective, which is all I ever wanted from this show. So a month later now, it seems as though I've experienced a more personal shift uh, in other ways. And I felt like maybe just chatting it out alone in this room uh, for the podcast might be beneficial. So this is episode number 31, which is interesting for a few different reasons. First of all, I am 31 years old. Um, You know, episode 31, I'm 31 years old. There's a synchronicity developing here. Uh, Next week, I'm very lucky to be working on the production of a show that's, um, you know, tentatively titled 31. (laughs) So, uh, there's something there. I felt like that was enough of a reason to start chipping away at some thoughts here. So, uh, whereas about a month ago, it may have been episode 21. I think it was actually, um, where I ranted about a a shift that I was having more on a ideological or, or a perspective, you know, a say a cognitive level but a level where I talk shifting how I thought about the world now this shift that I'm undergoing now it seems to be something about how I think about myself but ultimately I wonder if maybe the way we think about the world isn't the same thing as how we think about ourselves. and in fact what I'm going to be driving at here is that maybe it's useful to not see ourselves as being so different from the world the external world in that, you know, really, if you could break down the barriers of the self and the external, you know, there might be some peace to be found there. So I had a very interesting conversation with a woman named Mira, uh, and she's going to come on the podcast and talk about some of her experiences and ideas. They're really, they're kind of in some ways far, I don't want to say far fetched, but they're they're hard to grasp, but of course that doesn't mean they're wrong and really what is wrong and what is right, <laughs> you know. She talked a lot about, I would say, a sort of what to me feels like an Eastern flavor of spirituality or, um, yeah, because I don't know much, <laughs> clearly. But it was something about if we could, instead of seeing ourselves as a contained unit, but to see ourselves as a flowing river, a being that, of course, grows through time, but the, even the being doesn't start and end with us. We're just a place where being exists uh, in the moment. So uh, I have to have Mira on the show, and I will probably next month, early next month, to do that. I, If you listen to the Mooncast I did with Devin on January the 28th, you'll know that I spoke about uh, my, my friend Jeffrey Shineski. He was my best friend. And he passed away on January the 28th, 2011. So this year would have, of course, marked 10 years. And I found that, you know, we we did that mooncast and I dedicated it to his memory, of course. And I was texting with his father a little bit that day and, uh, you know, talk with a friend every now, talk with some of the friends who knew him briefly on that day or around that time. But, you know, at the time it felt like, it felt like I was, I was, I was forcing myself to think about him, you know, and it's like, that's fine. It's been 10 years, you know, he's been gone basically half as long as 
well, almost, you know, over half as long as the time that we were friends together, as long as the time that I knew him. We met when we were six. He died when we were 21. So that's 15 years, and now it's been 10 years without him. You know, so in some ways, time does, you move on like that flowing river. Um, But a few nights ago, I had a dream about him. And what I what struck me about that was okay so that's not me forcing myself to think about him that's me in a completely vulnerable unconscious state and his memory came up on its own or whatever but I didn't choose to dream about him and in the dream he was doing something very jeff like he was riding his bike but he was in the water you know and he he was somehow riding his bike uh, in the in the in the, in a lake or in the ocean, and I was walking along on shore. So, and he looked at me and said, "You got to give her, you got to give her," which is also something he would have said. In fact, I am pretty sure there was may have been a time or numerous times in real life where he rode his bike by me and said, "You got to give her." Um, and then I don't remember exactly what happened, but then suddenly I was chasing him down, down, down into the water. So. The bike was out of the equation and we were both sinking, sinking, sinking. And we, we continued to go deeper and deeper into the water, me pursuing him. And then it got to the point where the sunlight could no longer penetrate the water and it was in blackness. And I, I don't know if I lost track of him or I lost sight of him. But then suddenly I was suspended in this blackness and it wasn't even water anymore. And I was somewhere where it was just like myself, my body, my being, and nothingness. And for a while I floated or hung or whatever in that blackness. And then in the dream and in real life, I began I began to become very, very alarmed. Uh, I couldn't get out of that blackness. It was a lot like if you saw the film Get Out when he goes to the sunken place it was very much like that although here there was nothing and that was what was so horrifying maybe that was something like death although it'd be strange because in a sense I was seeing myself from the third person point of view seeing my body suspended in that blackness so maybe that is something like what death would feel like and then in real life I began to panic uh, I began to moan and groan and speak out and pant. My breathing quickened. Uh, my girlfriend, who I live with, she reached over and she she started rubbing my arm, shaking me. Had to wake me up because I was becoming so alarmed. I was I was in a full on almost I guess fight or flight. The start of that sort of a reaction, you know. Um, and I, I woke up and she told me what had happened. And I, I, all I could say at the time was, well, that's crazy. You know, but then lately I've just been feeling so, so low, a low energy. And I think about when I was going for psychological counseling, you know, the counselor, Colin, said to me, you'll miss Jeff the most when the seasons change. And sure enough, I look at the calendar and the night that I had that night terror that nightmare was the spring equinox the changing of the seasons not technically the season changes in one week from then on the 20th so i it got me thinking that in some unconscious way i at least am connected to the cosmos to the world on a seasonal, now I'm connected in a, in a way that I don't understand. That there's this churn within my soul that seems to go along with the changing of the seasons. You know, so here we are in the final week of winter, and you can see it, you know, in the way the sun comes in, comes in higher in the sky. There's sun, sunlight in my backyard for the first time in months. You know, like direct sunlight. And you start to think, well, I can feel that shift, but I can I can see that shift in the sky and the way the light, the way the light comes in the room different every day. 
the way the birds are more active, obviously geese, geese are back here in Edmonton. There's, the change is obvious. You can feel it in the way the, the warm wind, the stars have moved through the sky. You know, I went for a walk last night and that low, 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 low orange crescent moon, big, you know, with that kind of bottom right hand quadrant lit up and you could still see the whole outline of the moon but just the crescent was illuminated and you know that's not a winter moon that's a that's a spring moon um a note on that you know we missed the last moon cast and that was my fault we were going to do it on the new moon uh, couldn't make it so Devin and I are saving up for the 28th which is palm sunday and the the full worm moon so <laughs> we'll go digging for worms or something or open up a can of worms or something to commemorate that and and that brings me to the thought that like you know so much of our calendar is structured obviously by the moon and uh you know easter easter is the first full moon after the equinox you know whereas christmas is is celebrated right around the time for the furthest from the equinox right the solstice which is more of a obviously it's a sun related term but i guess when we talk about Easter and we talk about uh, the rebirth, you know, or the resurrection, uh, if you're talking about Jesus Christ, um, but, you know, obviously that makes a lot of sense uh, outside of the Christian story. You know, I just saw some videos of uh, of two new lambs that were born at the zoo. I mean, you <laughs> that's it right there. You know, so... You get thinking about, you get thinking about a sense of what it might mean to to be reborn yourself, you know, uh, you see cycles of rebirth all around you. There's cycles of rebirth. There's stories of rebirth told and you think about, well, what would that look like for me to be reborn while I'm still alive? You know, obviously there's memories from 10 years ago that are still churning around inside me that wake me up screaming. And I've always thought that maybe, well, not always, but lately I've thought maybe peace on earth is impossible. But something like peace on earth would have to start with peace, peace of mind. You know, a wholeness of being uh, might be the first step towards some kind of elevated human existence. You know, we're in a culture now where my image, my representation is somehow that's what I am. The way I choose to present myself to you, well, that's what I must be. You know, where, whereas if we turned our concern away from what I am towards something like what, why, I, why I do, why do I, because that's the thing. It's like the being, the am seems to be a sort of static or present state. And yet time is unceasingly marching on so your existence is necessarily defined by the passage of time now to me the why i do what i do is exactly that because i don't have that much time realistically who knows could be over right now could have 50 more good years could have somewhere in between So, all your actions are dictated by the fact that you're not going to be around forever. And so, to to spend this time crafting and presenting an avatar or a still image of yourself seems to me to signal a potential problem in our culture, or at least insofar as I can see it. What if we worked on breaking down those boundaries and those those hard definitions of the self and saying, this is what I am. 
And what if we started to think about ourselves, you know, rather than whole, and it's hard because we, we live, we're, we're in a time now when individuality, you know, a legacy, whether it's a family or a business, goals that you want to achieve, there's all these points on the line that are, you got to get there, but when you look at it like points on a, on a line, you miss the space between the points, that unceasing flow of time. And so, if we're hung up on these ideas, on these static points, on these, on these sort of manifolds that we put ourselves in to say, this is what I am, then the process the process gets sort of subsumed or, or made secondary to the goals. When in, in reality, you need, to, you need to make the process, above all, the goal itself. And in fact, to have a goal is, is very much to see yourself outside of yourself, and that's fine, but it's, it's the getting there that we need to really relish. So I guess what I'm talking about, a world where uh, values seem to be getting flattened out and we present ourselves as characters, that's talking about a society that's postmodern, where progress, per se, values, tradition, seem to be looked at with skepticism. You know, where conservatism or preservation is looked at with skepticism. And that's fine, but so what? If we're distrusting the past and and we're living in the present as this sort of, in this mode, and the future is what? If it's not defined by tradition, if it's not defined by the progress from tradition to the present, what is the future? Could we get to a place where if we're post if we're living in the postmodern, could we live too then in the post self? Could I see myself less as me and more as a part of? You know, I've been working on this process of, of being less and less enamored with my own ideas. You know, but what if you took it a step further and Mira talked about this? What if you what if you didn't see yourself as your body? What if you didn't see yourself as your consciousness? What if consciousness was the miracle? You know, I heard Jordan Peterson say that once and it blew my mind. You know, he said, before the Big Bang, the rules of physics didn't exist. So whatever happened before that would have been a miracle in some sense. What if human consciousness is the miracle? And what if it's eternal? You know, what if it's just nested in your physical self for a few decades, 80 years, 100 years, 75 years, 50, 60, 31? And then what if it goes? What if you started to look at yourself as not a point, but as a, a line, a place where consciousness has come in? And moves your physical, physicality, your physical being through time, for a time, and then moves on. So you may ask yourself, who am I? But I, I think I would really caution you on that question because who you are is an impossible definition. Because once you try and take a collection of thoughts and memories, traumas, and you slap on cultural frameworks, you slap on personality differences, then you start injecting somebody with other people's ideas, other people's thoughts, covering them in clothes that somebody else designed and made, putting them in cars in which they don't even really know how they work that gets them to a 
place to do a job where they only know enough to do what they can get paid some pittance to do? Well, who are you? <laughs> who are you? I, I, don't, I don't think you can really even answer that question. And so, last night when I was walking, I was walking alongside the white mud actually, just up, up the hillside between 59th and 70th. I was rounding the, rounding the bend, get going north on 170th, that low crescent moon and that, that warm wind. You know, a coyote came up, not too far from me, poked his head up and was looking at me. I didn't stop coming. So he ran. He ran across the white mud and he looked back at me from the other side. And and there's something, something told me that was like, I, I could feel then some sort of external. It made me think a lot about Jeff, but it, you know, in some ways what I remember about Jeff and what Jeff has become to me is, is, is sort of cosmic. You know, it's this external mystery. And every so often it's moments like that where I'm able to sort of glimpse behind the veil and get a sense of how the universe is talking to me. But it's not talking to me, it's just talking. And every so often my, I don't want to say frequency and vibration because then you start to use terminology that's loaded, but You know, God is maybe something like, you could say that our understanding of God is is the highest ideal of, of what a person could be, or the highest ideal that we can conceive of. But what if God is not a singular point? But what if God is the process by which all the entire universe works together? And every so often you get a glimpse at what that sounds like, looks like, feels like. So when you ask, who am I? Don't expect an answer. Rather listen and wait for that opportunity when you can tear down the am, the I, And just flow, just flow with the energy that makes up the entirety of everything. Rather than seeing yourself as this singular point, separate from everything, give yourself a chance to open up and to feel to feel yourself as one with everything else. Anyway, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Just some ideas. Uh, Thank you for listening, and thank you to those who have been listening to past episodes. Uh, Really appreciate it. You know, if you you are enjoying them, please subscribe, like, uh, share them with your friends, comment on them. Uh, Please reach out to me, Patrick at NorthBankMedia.com or Instagram, Patrick Strevens. Uh, but love to have you on the show. If you've got a, something going on, project, a business, a story to tell, it really doesn't matter. Let's talk. Uh, let's see what's going on out there and, and work on some of these harebrained, half-baked ideas of mine and, and hear all about yours as well. Um, right on, we've got some exciting episodes going forward into the spring. Obviously, the Boreal Parks Almanac with Devin is going to be going full steam ahead uh, when the weather and the land warm up, uh, doing lots of music and video recording out there. Uh, hoping to meet some people, get this thing rocking and rolling for summer, man. It's going to be great. So again, thank you very much for listening. We'll see you again soon.